Thank you. Uh, so now I will be presenting uh, our paper entitled Rational Verification for Probabilistic Systems. This is a uh, joint work with Julian Guitares, Louis Hammond, Anthony Lin, and Michael Woodridge. So we start with the question, how do we define correctness in multi-agent system? So this question can be rephrased as, is the system correct with respect to the set of stable behaviors? And so analyzing stable behaviors in a group of intelligent agents can be done by using game theory. So in doing so, we turn multi-agent system into a multiplayer game. So this gives, this gives rise to uh, the notion of rational fabrication. So in classical fabrication, we have model checker that requires two inputs. So the model and the specification. But in rational fabrication, rational model checker requires another input that is player preferences. So it will return yes if the claim is true in some equilibrium, otherwise it returns no. So in this work, we consider rational fabrication for probabilistic systems. We consider both cooperative and non-cooperative settings. And goals and specifications are uh, given by Altia formula. Games have concurrent actions, infinite horizon, and infinite memory. And we, we consider qualitative setting that is almost surely satisfaction. So it's uh, satisfied with probability one. So the games in this uh, work have finite set of players, states, and actions. And actions are concurrent, so players choose actions at the same time. And transitions can be probabilistic. So the arrowness of the games are basically Markov decision processes, but without rewards. And the non-determinism in the arenas is resolved by players joint actions. And players' goals are given by LTL formula. So strategies uh, for player I is given by a transistor. And we say that a strategy is memorialist if there is a transistor with uh, encoding strategy with uh, the number of states equals to one. And we say that it's finite memory if the number of states is strictly smaller than infinity. And once every player selected the strategy, then we have what we call a strategy profile sigma. So to define Nash equilibrium, first we define the set of winners and losers. So for a strategy profile sigma, the set of winners, W sigma, is uh, the players who get their goals satisfied under sigma. And for the set of losers, L sigma, those uh, players who don't get their goals satisfied under sigma. And for strategy profile sigma, it is a Nash equilibrium if for every losing pair i, then no matter what it does, then it keeps losing. So it keeps, it's still a loser, right? So no player can benefit by unilaterally changing its strategy. That's why it's stable. And in cooperative game, we have another solution concept that defines stability called core. So in cooperative game, player can make some agreement to co cooperate and they can form coalitions to achieve some goal. So sigma is a core if for every coalition, a uh, subset of losing pairs under sigma, there exists no coalitional beneficial deviation. So recall that in Nash equilibrium, we consider only single pair deviation, but in core, we consider coalitional deviation. So to illustrate this, uh, the difference, so suppose we have a zombie inside a room and the room has two doors, door A and B. So Ali controls door A, Bo controls door B. So in order to contain the zombie, both doors must be closed. Otherwise it will escape and eat both Ali's and Bo's brains. So consider the strategy profile close and close. This is an ASIC room, and this is core because they are safe, so they, they have maximum uh, payoff. Now, again, consider the strategy profile open and open. This is an ASIC room strategy profile because there exists no single pair beneficial deviation. But this is not a core 
since there exists a coalition of beneficial aviation. So Ali and Bo can agree to cooperate uh, closing the door and they will be safe from being eaten by the zombie. Now in Russian fabrication, we have some different problems. So first we have Inash and Ecore. So for a given game and LTL property phi, we ask whether there exists some Nash equilibrium or some core such that it satisfies the, the property. And then we can also ask the, the dual. So instead of for some, we ask for every Nash equilibrium or every core. And lastly, we have membership. So we are given game G and strategy profile sigma. We ask whether sigma is a Nash equilibrium or a core in the game G. Now, to characterize Nash equilibrium, we can characterize it by using punishment and memory. So punishment is needed because we know that by using punishment, deviations can be deterred. And memory is needed because we need to remember who deviating, who is deviating. So we can, uh, it's easier to do local reasoning usually, but the problem is that memory is generally needed uh, with LTL goal. But we know that memory is not needed for two player stochastic part games. So with this fact, we turn the game into some associated party game, G bar. And we have, uh, we need some inferences. The first is probability inference. So the probability inference means that the transformation preserves probability distribution. And we also have goal inference. So the transformation preserves player's goal satisfaction. And by these inferences, we have Nash equilibrium invariant. So the set of Nash equilibrium in the original game G correspond exactly to the set of Nash equilibrium in its associated party game G bar. And to find such run, first we find some punishment region here. And we need to find some run inside this region because inside this region, every deviation can be punished. And the run must be uh, the case that the run uh, satisfy the goal of each winning player. So those players that cannot be punished. And finding such run can be uh, done by quantitative party logic. And it can be done in polynomial time. So in total, we have double exponential time uh, procedure to find. And for long run, we use LTL model checking of our Markov decision process. So Enash and Enash are both double exponential time complete. Now, what about membership? So for membership, we find one losing pair. And if there exists uh, an alternative strategy sigma I prime such that it can turn itself into a winner, then we know that sigma is not an Ashkill room. So, and this, uh, this step can be uh, done by qualitative model checking of LTR formula of our uh, Markov decision process. And this can be done in double exponential time. For lower bound, we reduce from uh, LTL model checking over MDP. So we have double exponential time complete for Nashi Gurbun membership. Now for core, uh, again, recall in Nashi Gurbun, we consider single pair deviation. But in core, we consider coalitional deviation. So instead of finding just a punishment region, we find for coalitional punishment region. So in this, inside this region, every coalition can be punished. To find uh, a core, we turn game, game G into its party game G bar. And then we ask for each poison C if there exists a uh, search for sigma such that C is exactly the set of the winning players uh, under sigma. And if there exists no coalitional very beneficial deviation, then we know that sigma is a core of the game. To solve uh, this step, uh, we, it can also be done with quantitative priority logic. And this can be done in polynomial time. So we have double exponential procedure and we reduce again qualitative LTL model checking uh, for MDPs. Then we have E core and A core are both double exponential time complete. And for membership, we ask 
that for each uh, uh, collision A subset of the losers under sigma, we check if there is any collision of beneficial, uh, beneficial coefficient. If not, then we know that sigma is a core. So this amounts to model checking LTL formula of our Markov vision process again, and it can be done by double exponential time cross -through. For lower bar, again, we reduce to uh, LTL model checking of our MDPs. So we know that core membership is also double exponential time complete. So this is the complete uh, complexity map now. So in deterministic system, all of the distant problems are double exponential time complete, except for Nash equilibrium membership here, which is P space complete. But in probabilistic system, all of the distant problems are double exponential time complete. So uh, turning from deterministic to probabilistic, we only have one jump uh, in from P space to total exponential time. So for future work, there are some uh, obvious avenues. For example, we can extend this into other sat satisfaction conditions, or we can go to almost or fully quantitative uh, setting, quantitative setting, sorry. And we can also some, find some more tractable cases by using some fragments of LTL, or maybe some different logics. And lastly, we can implement the procedure into some practical tool. Thank you.